coaster ride that is Lamar Jackson and the Ravens offense shifts month to month, week to week, play by play, moment by moment. There were the times early in the year where Lamar was the slam dunk MVP, the Ravens were the easy money AFC one seed, and it looked like the alterations the offense had made following the monsoon of injuries were actually paying off. They'd lost running backs like J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards. They'd lost their all-pro offensive tackle Ronnie Stanley, their all-pro corners Marcus Peters and Marlon Humphrey. But still, Lamar willed them to 7-3 by playing out of his mind on a weekly basis. He had taken the next step in his quarterback evolution, as deadly throwing the ball as he was running with it. But then this ride started to go off the rails. After a glorious 34-31 overtime win against the Vikings in Week 9, the Ravens are 2-3 and, and haven't scored more than 22 points in a game. Their offense has gone cold, they're completely out of whack, and the worst part is their same typical issues, ones we've covered on this channel, are back and worse than ever. Their offensive coordinator Greg Roman has proven he can design the best run game in the league, but when it comes to passing, the Ravens offense is as chaotic and uncoordinated as ever. We're gonna take a look at exactly how and when they started struggling, but real quick, I want to thank my friends at Fetch for sponsoring another episode. Fetch is a super easy to use free app where you earn free rewards on anything you buy. Whenever you make a purchase, whether it's in real life or online, just scan the receipt or e-receipt, get points for it, and use those points to receive free gift cards. It sounds crazy, but it's not. It's really easy. Just take out the receipt, the app scans the receipt, and those points go right to free gift cards. And no, those gift cards aren't to some random gas station or the 7-Eleven that's two hours from your house. We get places like Amazon, Nike, NFL Shop, really anywhere you can think of. There's no pay to play, hidden costs, no credit card, anything. It's straight up free. Just use your phone, scan the receipt, get the points, and get that money. To get 3,000 points right off the bat, which is about $3 towards any kind of gift card. All you have to do is click the link in the description box, download the app, and use the code ROLLINS, that's R-O-L-L-I-N-S, when you scan your first receipt. Thank you, Fetch. And now we're back to the show. Everything kind of started falling apart in week seven for the Ravens. In a highly anticipated AFC North showdown against the Bengals, they got their doors absolutely blown off 41-17. Lamar was benched in the third quarter, and the root of their problems was exposed, their inability to find answers against cover zero blitzes. It's long been Greg Roman's kryptonite, creating answers for this type of blitz, and in the year 2021, it's led to the Ravens' nosedive. Typical cover zero blitzes have zero deep safeties, hence the name, and are all about creating immense pressure on the QB, while covering each receiver one-on-one -on -one and betting on the pressure getting there first. But teams are running slightly different variations against the Ravens. The Bengals ran their version of cover zero six times and allowed just 0.8 yards per pass, and we all know that even just six plays can ruin an offense's day. But that was nothing compared to what Miami did to the Ravens just a few weeks later. They ran that same blitz 31 times. That was a defensive performance that shocked the Ravens to their core. They were utterly outmatched against this Dolphins game plan, and that's partially because they ran their atypical cover zero with even a couple more tweaks than everybody else. Standard cover zero has the coverage a little tighter, but their corners play deeper, almost at safety depth, and watch their technique during the play. Instead of strict man coverage, where you're locked onto your assignment with your eyes, not only are they all visioning Lamar as if it's zone, but they're also playing what's called a banjo technique, where one guy takes the inside receiver and the other guy takes outside. To beat cover zero, offenses try to counter with quick passes or outbreaking routes since defenses are usually kind of giving you the tougher to complete outside throw. So by dropping into what's almost a zone while playing man, that allows the Dolphins to create tighter coverage. The reason their secondary can play a little further off the ball is because of all the chaos that's transpiring up front, where the Dolphins use read principles in their cover zero to help alleviate pressure on the rest of the defense. This pressure is all about bringing one more defender than the offense's blockers. We can see the Ravens have added Patrick Ricard and Devontae Freeman to the protection, which makes seven blockers to protect Lamar, but the Dolphins have added whoever's guarding those two to create eight. If all eight of them come, Lamar could theoretically just hit a quick slant over the middle, and if his receiver breaks the corner, that's a touchdown. So the Dolphins take the schematic battle of the brains up another notch. They send all eight to overload the protection, but task certain defenders to drop into that quick slant or hot window underneath if they're getting blocked. When the center and guards slide to the left, well, 
These linemen have now essentially wasted them in protection to get the safety free off the edge, so now they can drop into the middle to take away any quick routes, subtracting a weakness of cover zero. So they get the free runner without allowing the quick easy pass, which is a nightmare scenario for any quarterback. So, fine. That kind of crap happens every now and then. It is what it is. But the problem is that the Ravens offense and Greg Roman don't know how to adjust in-game and already should have developed answers after they saw it from the Bengals, but they didn't and couldn't. You can see the next time the Dolphins run it, they try to overload the coverage to the left and get a quick screen to Hollywood Brown to create a wall for him to scoot around his defender. But since the Dolphins have zone eyes and are watching Lamar, they don't fall for the screen and outmaneuver the blocks. Then they call what's known as sprint left option, so Lamar can run away from the free runner and mitigate some of the pressure. But once again, since the Dolphins are kind of in zone and not just man, it's pretty much the same result. Then they try out leveraging the linebacker to the flat by putting their running back in motion. But once again, same sort of deal, the secondary just watches Lamar and it's too easy. He dealt with free runners flying off the edge the rest of the night, and the Roman and the Ravens just couldn't handle the more sophisticated style of defense. You simply cannot play quarterback when a defender is consistently free off the edge every single play without a quick, easy outlet. There's something different you have to do. When Lamar brought more guys into block, the Dolphins just added on the pressure, and the Ravens couldn't execute whatsoever, their offense basically looked like it was designed by Kevin James. Nobody the Ravens have played since has run cover zero 31 times against them, but teams have certainly sprinkled it in with similar results and have actually exposed even bigger problems. Roman hasn't had an answer for this pressure really his entire tenure with the team, and a major reason why is his lack of attention to detail. Timing in football is such a critical element that if you're one step too late or one step out of place, it can ruin the entire game, and that's especially been an issue this last month for Baltimore. Take this two-play example against the Steelers where they use the trendy coverage. Every team plays it a little differently, and the Steelers' flavor is to play more of a zone type of shell coverage where even though the Ravens have three receivers to one side, the Steelers are playing it almost like it's two by two. They are also using the banjo technique where even though Terrell Edmonds is technically responsible for the third receiver Mark Andrews, he's going to take the inside receiver and Minka Fitzpatrick the outside. So at the snap, once Devin Duvernay declares underneath, Edmonds peels off and takes him. The reason this pass is incomplete is because Roman still doesn't have answers for cover zero because his play designs lack that attention to detail. Lamar reads Edmonds shifting over to the left, so he turns to Rashad Bateman, who should be breaking off his route at the first down marker, especially since the corner is in off coverage with his hips flipped, and Lamar knows it. But instead, Bateman takes off deep, and the play is essentially dead. Fast forward to the end of the game with just 35 seconds left and the Ravens down a touchdown, where they would still score a play later, but then ultimately not convert the two-point conversion. But here they missed an opportunity, which doesn't always work out a second time. The Steelers are showing their same cover zero look with the four deep defensive backs, and the Ravens have their same three receiver alignment. Pittsburgh's kind of trying to pretend this DB is guarding Mark Andrews, but Lamar and Andrews know he's blitzing, and remember that the Steelers just use their backside safety to roll back strong for Andrews. The moment the play starts, Andrews turns for the ball, Lamar instantly throws it, but there's miscommunication. I believe this is more on Andrews for not staying up the seam away from the safety, that's where Lamar threw it, but even more so on Roman for not clearly defining the rules in his concepts to put his players on the same page. Against the Dolphins, Steelers, and Browns, Lamar was blitzed a combined 54 times and his QBR was just 9.4, but if the detail and process of the concepts he's running put him in awful no-win situations, who's really to blame? The Browns wisely also played a fair amount of cover zero, and the Ravens had a similar answer like they did before, albeit a little different. They tried to set a screen with their three receiver side for Duvernay, who's crossing the formation, but look at Duvernay's split. It's certainly closer to the tackle than it might usually be, but he needs to get outside of these blockers ASAP, and he simply can't get there in time. Plus, look at how the blocks are set up. They're almost acting like this is for the running back to get the ball. By the time the blockers make contact, Duvernay isn't anywhere near where he needs to be, and the Browns just peel off and make the tackle. This episode has been all about cover zero and how Roman has failed to scheme up viable answers to a concept they've seen over and over, and those failures also seep into other areas. His inability to create proper spacing and dropback style concepts is a major problem as well, which can also be attributed to his lack of attention to detail. Anytime receivers are this close together is a telltale sign the coordinator is struggling to create efficient and effective concepts. 
Offensive play design is all about stressing defenders by stretching them horizontally or vertically, creating defined reads for your quarterback, messing with a defender's eyes. But when you have two receivers in one spot, just one defender can take away multiple guys, you even have multiple receivers running into each other, and the QB has to keep his eyes in one spot longer. These questions in the passing game have plagued Roman and Lamar for years, especially in the playoffs, but now that the Ravens have suffered all of these injuries to the running backs and Ronnie Stanley too, Lamar is on pace to throw more than he ever has, and Roman is getting exposed. Teams don't run cover zero against the Ravens every play, except if you're the Dolphins, but it's a prime example of the micro and macro issues with this passing attack. Roman knows that cover zero is coming each and every week, but can't concoct a plan to block it or exploit it, and his lack of attention to detail to even just this one concept shows where and why this passing game has suddenly gone cold. Teams get beat by a surprise game plan or inferior team all the time, it happens. But the real, legitimate worry is that the Ravens still haven't adjusted. This isn't even a two or three week thing, but a season long and career long thing, that's what's really troublesome. On a somewhat positive note, if Roman does figure out an answer against Cover Zero, he can quickly play defenses out of it to where the Ravens wouldn't really see it anymore. And if that does happen, that could be a sign that this passing game is turning the corner, where he could also hopefully iron out some of the issues with spacing. The Ravens do have Lamar Jackson, and he was playing at an unbelievable level as recently as just a month ago, and he is capable of doing everything and more on the football field to create explosive offense. Baltimore is still 8-5, first in the AFC North, and fourth in the AFC. They've been to the playoffs every year of Lamar's career, and so is Greg Roman. The Ravens are still scary, the quarterback is still Lamar, now we just need a few more answers. Oh